Okay, uh, next one. Factor the special trinomials. Sorry, I guess if I wrote that down earlier, I should have taken more time to write it. Hopefully you can read that. Factor the special trinomials. Okay, because they're special trinomials, I know that they're one of two types. We learned about difference of squares and perfect squares. Now this is a difference of squares. You can tell because they're squared numbers, or square numbers, which means that I can take the square root of them and get integers. And they're also a difference because they're separated by a negative sign. Notice that there is zero x here. There is no x term. So that's because it came from 5x and 5x minus 6. Notice if you expand this out, there's your 25x squared. I get negative 30x when I do 5 times negative 6. And 6 times 5, I get positive 30x. And those two things go to 0. And then I get my negative 36. So this one is a difference of squares. Done. Next one. Now, because it said factor the special trinomials, I know this is a special trinomial. So I know that this is going to be 5p plus 2 and 5p. Whoops, no. Nope. These are both going to be minus in this case. They have to both be minus 2 in order to get that negative 20. Now, how do I check to make sure this actually works right? Well, what you do is you do 5 times 2 and 5 times 2, and you add them together. So you get negative 10p, negative 10p, there's your negative 20p. So check, this is correct, but you should be writing it because the answer they want to see for your perfect squares. Okay, last one, difference of squares. Now this one has a squared and b squared, but that just means that this is 7a. That's what happens when you take the square root of that. And then you're going to minus 4b, and then this one is going to be 7a plus 4b. Again, difference of squares have the same bracket but different signs, whereas a perfect square has the same bracket with sign in that bracket comes from this b value here. OK. Now, this one is determine a simplified expression for area for this thing, which they say is not to scale. OK, now there's a couple of different ways to do it. If you want, you can chop it like this and find this area in this area, or you can chop it like this and find that area in that area. But the easiest way to do it, because they give you these two dimensions and these dimensions, let's do a whole rectangle. So I'm just going to find this whole area, and then I'm going to subtract that area. OK. So area large is going to be 3x minus times 2x plus 7, which is going to be 6x squared uh, plus 21x minus 8x minus 28. Everybody follow where, that's, where those numbers are coming from? So 3x times 2x, so I multiply that. There's my 6x squared, then I multiply that and get my 21x, then I multiply that, get my negative 8x, then I multiply that, get my negative 28. Uh, and then I'm going to simplify those two in the middle, so it's 6x squared plus uh, 13x minus 28. Okay, there's my area large. Now my area small is going to be this little one that I'm going to subtract here, which is going to be x plus 1. Now, again, this threw some people off because it's not to scale, but this little tick mark means that that is the same as that. It's 1, which is going to give me x squared plus 1x plus 1x minus plus 1. So there's x squared, 1x, 1x, 1. Those two things come together, and you get x squared plus 2x plus 1. And now I need to actually subtract it, though. So now, to get the full area, I'm going to do 6x squared plus 13x minus 28. And then I'm going to subtract x squared plus 2x plus 1. But because I'm subtracting this whole polynomial, I need to put it in a bracket. I'm going to subtract everything in here, which means I'm going to subtract x, subtract 2x, subtract 1. So 6x squared minus x squared is 5x squared. 13x minus 2x's is 11x's. And negative 28 minus another 1 is negative 29. And that is an expression for the area.